All right, everybody, so let's just go ahead and jump right into this video. So I'm so glad y'all are able to join me in the studio for another awesome video. This video specifically is all me hand painting this beautiful ocean reef uh, tumbler. So my wife had requested that I create an ocean reef tumbler. She said I could do water slides and things like that. But I decided to make it next level and just take the time, invest the time, and hand paint it all out of acrylic paints. So the very base of this cup is a combination of holographic pearl glitters uh, as well as a, a multitude of blue Tim Holtz uh, inks uh, and then a few blue mica powders just to create a nice uh, ombre swirl from dark at the bottom to light at the top to kind of give the ocean spectrum as the light were to come through the ocean uh, uh, waves at the top right so it, it kind of has a really cool ombre effect uh, I'm going to begin by blocking in the uh, actual rock formations, which I started off at the very beginning of this video. And I'm just going to slowly uh, layer in different color combinations. I want it to be vibrant. I want it to be spontaneous. And I'm just kind of getting, getting the general shape of a bunch of the coral reef pieces uh, as I work my way around the tumbler. Now, I did do this in quite a few different segments and painting sessions because I had a lot of customer orders in the process. Uh, and I'll mention this probably again in a little while, but the running joke with this build is that I began it at the beginning of the summer and I kept putting it off, putting it off, getting distracted by other projects. And my wife kept telling me, well, maybe I'll see it around Christmas time. <laughs> I know it's funny and all. And I was like, I'll get it done. I'll get it done. I, I promise, honey. And of course, it's it's now fall season. We're rolling into October and spooky Halloween season. And I'm just now barely getting this thing done. So I'm so excited to be able to get this done for her so she can actually start using it and taking it to work and just enjoying the, the art of the cup. Uh, and I'm so glad that I was able to produce this for her. So just uh, this first part of the video is just me hand blocking in the overall reef, a few of the fishes as I work around the tumbler. So just sit back and enjoy this process and then I'll catch you back at the next stage. Enjoy guys. So you'll notice throughout this video, it is in an extreme time lapse. This is almost 12 times speed, and it was multiple painting sessions. So you know, don't act, like, don't think I'm going super fast in any way. This is 12 times speed. It is a lot of, of painting time, and just uh, I really took my time with it and enjoyed the process. Uh, it kind of drove my wife crazy just because of how long it took for me to get this product out for her. But I like putting the time and effort into it, and I think it means more for her. Uh, so you'll see, I like to do a lot of wet on wet blending on the actual item itself. Uh, I don't really have to worry about blending the colors on my palette and then moving them over. It just means that I can just kind of lay out the colors, solid streaks on the canvas or my palette, and then I can just wet blend those in where I need them to be. Uh, I just like doing that. It's really fast. It's like really easy.
All right, so as you can see, I kind of have a habit of blocking in my shapes before I begin any kind of detail work, whether that be in titanium white or uh, Mars black base. And then I can work up the colors over that. And it also keeps those behind or background colors and glitters and micas from shining through uh, my base layers of paint as I build up layers and get kind of the de definition that I want. So here I am using a white acrylic pen just to quickly uh, kind of lay in the details that I want. And originally I wasn't using this, I was just kind of hand painting it all. And using that, that pen, it just expedites the process quite a bit. So use what you have on hand as I'm doing here. And if uh, don't, don't, don't feel like you have to be a purist in any way. I, I used to feel that way. And now I'd want to make sure that I did everything by hand, do it all by hand. Well, we have all of these things at our fingertips. Why not use in, uh, those things to make life a little bit easier so you can enjoy the process even more instead of just getting kind of burnt out on those small base layer details uh, of something that you may not have painted before. To so go ahead and grab that pen, block it in the way you want to, just as you would on paper, and then start building up your detail layers from there. So you'll see me pulling the pen a, a few times just to kind of like, you know, sketch things out and then, and then I switch over to the brush. So I'm going to continue wet blending a little bit of that sap green as uh, well as some uh, yellow ochre and just a tiny bit of uh, cadmium yellow uh, into that coral right there. Just kind of blending that out, making it look nice and fluffy. Uh, and then I'll start to bring in some of the uh, burnt umber into that as well. And then I kind of just create some different shapes. Uh, I'm looking at some, just some overall reference photos on uh, Google. I've never really painted any kind of coral reef before, so I'm just kind of just varying up, switching it up. I don't want it to be too mundane, and I want it to be vibrant and have lots of variety of colors um, and just be very kind of spontaneous. So for this build in general, you'll kind of see that I mostly use, pretty much only use, Windsor & Newton uh, gallery paints. I love these paints. I love Windsor & Newton. If I were to ever become sponsored by a paint company, um, a tube paint company, I would want it to be Windsor & Newton. I love all of their products, and they, I've never had issues with any of their paints. Just out of the tube, a lot of these are. Uh, this uh, or cadmium orange hue is absolutely so vibrant. And I'm coming in with some titanium uh, white to kind of uh, highlight the tips of those pieces of coral. But you can just see how great that color is against not just the blue swirl base, but the actual rock formation that I had kind of laid in and framed in from before. It looks really great just straight out of the tube, and I love these paints for that. I know you can get that from a lot of different paints, but I just like Windsor & Newton in general. Uh, they've always done me good, and I kind of stick with them. 
the titanium white that I'm using uh, in uh, the Mars Black is just basics paint. Uh, I do like to buy those in bulk, so I just buy like a cheap brand, and then I'll kind of blend those in as I need to. Uh, I do not buy um, um, ivory black. I, I don't think that many objects have true black in them, so I do like to use Mars Black, which is more of like, uh, to me, it's more of a grayed out, uh, dingy uh, black color, and I just like that a little bit more for blending in colors. So look how great that orange is, guys. I'm so happy with how that orange uh, coral turned out, and I kind of dominated that, that side of the tumbler a little bit with that. It's very cool. I'm going to bring in some highlights to the tips of that coral reef right there, uh, and I'm going to kind of shade those. So I'm going to kind of darken the under portions uh, and kind of lighten the top parts where the highlights need to be. It just brings that, that coral reef forward a little bit, brings out some of that texture. So I'm going to continue kind of rotating the cup around in different sessions uh, as it dries on my little pool noodle there. And I'm just going to keep layering in things. Originally, when I started this little purple shape here, I thought it was going to be like a large clam. I, I think I kind of pulled it off a little bit. It's a little bit bigger than what it probably should be. Uh, but I just kind of gave it just a, just a kind of a sloping texture with some highlights uh, on a uh, Windsor violet uh, color. Uh, and it just gave it a really cool, cool effect there. I like that it kind of just uh, broke up the the monotony of the coral around it, and it just gave it a different direction. And as I rotate the cup around, I'll kind of finish out the majority of the reef there, and then I kind of jump into something else before I come back and finish the reef towards the end. So originally, uh, my wife just wanted some dolphins in the coral reef around the bottom of the cup. I decided to kind of up my game a little bit more. And what I decided to do is I wanted to add turtles to the cup. Um, so, so instead of having like a bunch of dolphins, so like maybe one dolphin for every family member, I decided to just kind of keep the dolphins, her, and, and the kids. And then I wanted to put two uh, turtles on the opposite side of the cup so to signify me and her right just a little bit of, of variation it's not just dolphins and grease it's it allows me to kind of break away and, and paint something yet again that I have never painted before which is a sea turtle uh, I know that I wanted to kind of have natural like brown colors um, it's not going to have like a blue wash over it so it's not going to look like it's inset into the water or anything like anything like that so i'm gonna begin just by using just a quick stencil that i had created with a procreate and i cut out on the cricket and i'm just going to quickly get my high uh, uh titanium white highlight onto the tumbler and then i can kind of start blocking in the colors from there uh, and then I, as i bring those uh, those overall shapes of the, the shell and the, the skin texture and the fins up then i can start bringing in uh different browns uh, burnt umber, raw sienna, a little bit of uh, actual metallic bronze, as well as some color shifting green paint around the actual uh, uh, turtle shell uh, formations on his back. Kind of just uh, something that if you were to look very closely at the cup and kind of hold it towards the light and shift it, it would actually catch the light and those color shifting paints and the bronzes would really kind of catch the light and just draw the eye even more to that object. Now this turtle here is actually going to be slightly behind a rock formation and then the one that comes a little bit later will be up and above and it will be a full turtle that will be visible in, uh, you know, completely. So just sit back as, I, as you kind of enjoy this process here uh, and then I'll catch you back at the next stage of the painting process. All right, so we'll go ahead and pull that stencil off there, and it will leave a perfect turtle silhouette behind. 
You'll also notice that that reef or that rock formation is going just in front of the lower body there. So that, that back leg or that back fin will pop out through that peekaboo hole there, which is pretty dark in itself. But when I come back and I add a lot of colorful reefs to that rock formation, it really brings it really brings an eye to him in a way because he's going to be a nice brown uh, and pale olive uh, and a, a yellow ochre tone. Uh, I want to try to go with some natural colors in some ways, but then the bronze and the uh, color shifting green paint around the edges of the shell just kind of just make it pop. And those are actually folk art paints, not Winsor & Newton. So Winsor & Newton, two paints for the majority. And then we switch over to some uh, craft paints for metallics and color shifting highlights. So then as I complete that, that portion of the build and I'm waiting for that turtle to dry so I can start layering in more colors, I'm going to go ahead and just continuously go over where I've already went and just work in small detailed highlights in different colors. I want to start to bring up those tones in different ways and just apply shadow and shade uh, to, to those particular areas just to kind of bring some depth to it so that way it's just not so flat. I want to try to simulate a lot of, a lot of angles and a lot of variations in the rock formation by adding the reef in the right way. Then I'm gonna go ahead and apply a, I believe this was a burnt umber base coat to the turtle. And this is where I'm gonna start beginning to build up those layers. I'm rolling in with some Naples yellow. I did not use any titanium white on the turtles themselves. So no titanium white moving forward. This is all Naples yellow, which is just a very, very beautiful white. Uh, yellowish white color uh, and then you'll kind of see me build out uh, some more burnt umber around uh, the, the face texture around the fins and then uh, I also use pale olive and then eventually I use some yellow ochre before those uh, metallic highlights. Alright, so at a certain point, I just have to stop working on the turtles. I'll keep working and working and working, and then eventually I'll get to the point where I'm just like, I've put too much paint on it, I absolutely hate the thing. You can kind of see a really quick highlight clip there. If you want to rewind 10 seconds, you may catch it. It's so fast. I actually made a, a, a hello, hi, I'm Dory TikTok. 
So I decided to paint a Dory uh, little caricature on the tumbler itself. So you'll kind of see those in the, in the glamour shots towards the end. But that is also posted on my TikTok page. And it was just so fun to be able to put that on the cup. So that when my wife picks it up and looks at it, she can always think, Hi, I'm Dory. It's just kind of funny. And it was just, uh, I got my daughter involved into it. My, my son was doing it. And it was just a, really just a fun a fun thing that the family got into for a few weeks while that trend was happening on TikTok. It was just kind of funny. So I'm building out some seagrass here. Uh, uh, whatever you want to kind of call it. I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of different types of seagrass and uh, things like that, that, that critters live in uh, critters uh, sea life lives in. And I'm going to go ahead and build this out with uh, some color shifting paint, uh, sap green, a little bit of titanium white here. Not very much though. Uh, and then I'll kind of bring in some darker tones as well with some Mars black between and then I'll start to add some uh, seahorses to this. Now, these would be absolutely microscopic at the scale that the, the reef is. However, I still wanted to make them visible. So what I did is I believe, I believe I started with some Mars Black on these. And all these are, you can just see the head, the belly, and the tail. And I curved those in different ways. So it makes it look like they're cur the tail's curved around the seagrass. Uh, and I'll come in with some more highlights on that seagrass as I build these out. And then I came in with some bronze. This is just pure bronze. And I'm just going over the existing Mars black. And it's just kind of, it draws the eye. You can see it draws the eye a lot more to those, uh, to those seahorses. And then I come in with a little bit of, uh, I think I did a little bit of Mars black in a uh, burnt sienna wash over them I, I did not record that i do apologize and then i took a little dab straight from the tube of paint of uh of pain gray so and those are just where the eye is it's very microscopic but if you get down to the nitty-gritty and you look at it you can see those eyeballs or the, the pupils uh, of the seahorses I'm going to go ahead and continue building out this, uh, the reef there. I'm trying to use as many vibrant colors and not repeat a bunch of the same shapes. I don't want it to be the same all the way around, but I do want to create just the impression of texture. That's the goal. The impression of texture without going out and above and beyond to apply too much detail to it. Because this is from a, a distance, right? And the the underlying every piece of reef isn't the eye, the, what's supposed to catch the eye. The turtles, the dolphins, uh, the, the, the little uh, star, uh, starfish there, those are where it's supposed to catch the eye. So I'm kind of just uh, kind of blending them in loosely, uh, adding a few details to them and moving on to the next stage. All right, so it kind of jumps here into a different painting session. So all the paint is going to dry here in a moment, and you're going to see just a bunch of detail appear. I did uh, paint a little bit of it off camera when I was crafting with my daughter. Uh, so some of it's not recorded, but you can kind of get the gist. It's the same concept, blending in those base colors and then adding highlights here and there. Uh, and you can see the orange surrounding this formation I'm working on now. It's just a general orange and uh, dark brown color with a few highlights here and there with some, uh, uh, I think this was uh, Naples yellow. So it's just kind of just bringing in variations of colors to simulate texture. That's all it's about, guys. Simulating texture while, uh, while just applying a few details here and there to draw the eye. You can kind of see around the sea turtle, I decided with a vibrant uh, red color. I believe that was some cadmium red and some alizarin crimson as well with some uh, Mars black and burnt sienna highlights. That turned out absolutely fantastic and the brown and the green of the sea turtle really popped against that red. It looked really good. Just adding in some different angles and some variations here. I decided to continue that uh, coral formation down a little bit further uh, towards the starfish. Adding some of those titanium white highlights and then just continuously working that down. I did find that I liked adding these little titanium white 
uh, highlight speckles to a lot of the, the, the uh, pieces of formations because I felt like it gave it a lot of texture. Uh, it made it simulate they had those little little speckle dot uh, coral reef effect, and I just like adding those. Um, maybe it gave it more life in a way, highlights and life. I just like that it kind of uh, highlighted those areas, brought them forward a little bit uh, in just a subtle way. And I think that it really brought a little bit of realism to those flat, uh, basic or earthy colors. And it kind of bring them, brought the, the life to them uh, and brought them forward a little bit. It's just those subtle things that really you don't really pick up on. But if you were missing them, you would kind of be able to tell. Blocking in a few of just uh, silver fish above the coral reefs. And then I do block in some, uh, some itty bitty tiny fish, just solid color fish with eyes later on. They're just super uh, microscopic. They're, they're barely there at all. But I wanted to add some, some fish in the coral reefs themselves. But they're just subtle. They're, not, they're nothing of real substance. Uh, and they're nothing that really will draw the eye unless you're looking for them. All right, so here's Mr. Octopus getting finished out. I just used some uh, rose pink on this, just very simple. Just uh, blocked in some basic colors. I shaded them just ever so slightly and then called them a day. You probably won't even notice them unless you're looking for them. I tried to talk my wife into a moray eel in a cave somewhere, and she just she did not like that idea. <laughs> it's okay. Maybe another time. So here I am blocking in the second turtle, whether this is me or my wife. <laughs> being simulated here it does not matter there's two of us here we're, we're a partnership so i'm going to go ahead and block this in the same way the same overall color scheme it's just he's just a full-on turtle now i did block this in i painted part of them and then i left and came back later on so it does jump to dry here shortly uh, just be aware that it was painted in two or three different sessions just because I was under time restraints at the time. So just sit back and enjoy the process. Same color combination as the previous turtle.
All right, so with the turtle pretty much blocked in there, add a few last highlights just to kind of uh, bring those uh, those flippers or fins a little bit forward. Um, and then I go ahead and begin the process of, of blocking in the dolphins here. Now, as the same concept, I went ahead and blocked those in with titanium white uh, with a stencil just for ease of application here. Now, I did want to make them very... I didn't want them to look extremely bright. I wanted them to look very much more natural in color as if they were kind of just blending with the background. I want you to be looking at the reef and then be looking at the cup, twirling it around, and all of a sudden, bam, there's a family of dolphins or a pod of dolphins there, and it would just be really cool. So I'm kind of just letting that block in there. I'm highlighting them a little bit at a time, wet on wet blending as I go. Uh, I'm using a little bit of ultramarine blue, Windsor blue, uh, and I'm bringing in a little bit of titanium white, not a whole lot, uh, and then I'm just going to kind of blend in pain, uh, pain gray. So just kind of enjoy this process here. Once it completely dries, I'll go ahead and apply the, the, the mouth, the uh, eye, and then also the shading around the blowhole. Uh, on the top of each dolphin. Once those are completely dry, I did decide to come back with a color shifting blue uh, folk art paint and I applied very light dry brushed highlights to the top sides of each one. It's so minute that it's almost not visible. And then once it dries, it does dry a little bit darker than what it appears here, but it's so, so nice in comparison to the vibrant base below on the reef. It really gives a good contrast and I'm so happy how it turns out. guys so i think this is looking pretty good i'm gonna block in and finish up the last two baby uh dolphins there uh is there another word for baby dolphins other than just baby dolphins i will say that one thing that i found difficult is getting the noses right there's a lot of different species of dolphins uh, saltwater freshwater but uh, i know that these were supposed to be bottle uh bottle nose dolphins and i had a problem in getting the noses right even when my wife picked it up she said why does their noses look so weird? And I had to use an X-Acto knife and kind of scrape down that nose a little bit because I made them too flat and kind of make those more of a bottle nose effect. So I did have to come back and do some repair work later on in the process. 
it was small it doesn't uh you know it's not a make it or break it type of thing but i did have to scrape some of that paint off to make it feel more like bottlenose dolphins and it, and it just didn't before and this is her cup after all so all the i thought they looked okay uh she's she's the boss and we went ahead and, and repaired those for her uh she's the one who's gonna be using the cup after all so happy wife happy life right guys is that the right answer i think so <laughs> All right, so here I am. I think these these little dolphins or this pot of dolphins are looking absolutely spectacular. I love their their their, their shading. Uh, they look pretty good. There's lighter on top. Uh, I shaded the fins uh, and the flippers, and then they, they also have that little little any microscopic uh, uh, metallic blue folk art paint highlight that I'm adding now, just to the uh, upper portion. It doesn't really draw the eye too much, but if you're really like looking at it detailed, you can really see that that uh, metallic blue on their backs, just as an uh, an, an additional highlight. So here's how it looks so far. I think this looks spectacular. I got my wife's final approval on the overall design, and she was really happy with it. Next step is to go ahead and let it cure up for about maybe 12 to 24 hours, and then I can uh, go ahead and begin the epoxy work. And before I roll into that, guys, I, so a lot of you guys have already seen me do two-part epoxy before on cups. You've already seen the application. I mix it up. Uh, one part to one part and then we mix it and then we apply it. this cup itself I used around 20 mls per session and it took around three layers to get the chunky on the bottom completely covered but otherwise it turned out absolutely flawless it's super smooth and, and it turned out to be a great design it brings a few of those colors and the metallics a little bit forward and it brings the vibrance of those colors out and it makes all of those blended colors and layers pop a lot so uh, be uh, before we roll into glamour shots in the top right hand corner i did get a shot of it on a spinner that was a TikTok video so i'll post that in the top right hand corner in three two one so there's that absolute awesome colors there and before we roll into glamour shots, I would like to thank you all for making it this far into the video. If you use the timestamps below, that's absolutely awesome. But let's go ahead and roll into some glamour shots and some awesome music. Let's get it. Uh, all right, what an absolute amazing design, guys. I'm so proud of how this thing turned out. I haven't hand painted one like this in quite some time and it was all things that I've never painted before. I've never done reefs, turtles, or dolphins and it was so fun to be able to use just such a wide range of colors from Windsor & Newton paints. And then a lot of a few folk art paints as well for the metallics and the, uh, the color shifting paint. 
So that was absolutely awesome. My wife loves the tumbler, and now she gets to finally take it to work. Of course, it's the off season. It's the spooky season now, so she may have to wait until next summer to use it. Like I said, that was our running joke is that uh, that it would not be done before the end of summer, and indeed it wasn't. So, honey, you were right. You were right all along. I admit this. You'll never hear me say it again, guys. Again, I appreciate you all for making it this far into the video. Uh, I do appreciate all of you very, very much. If you haven't uh, subscribed already, definitely hit the subscription button and the notification bell. I hope to put out a bunch of new, fun, awesome projects for you in the future. Again, thank you for all you do, guys, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.